Hello, welcome to episode 174 of the Epic Film Challenge 2, A Thousand and One Movies You Must See Before You Die, 1963's Flaming Creatures. For a good couple of seconds there, um, when I was watching this film, I, I considered just packing this whole Epic Film Challenge in and just forgetting about it, moving on with my life and just watching what I want to watch. But no, uh, I will soldier on and be a word of warning to many of you who maybe wanted to go through this book yourself and want to avoid some of the shitter titles that have been included. Um, Flaming Creatures is an experimental film, an underground film, an avant-garde film, which is all code for shit, basically. There's one thing I loved about Flaming Creatures, there's one thing I absolutely adored. It, it touched me deep down in my soul, and that was the fact that it was only 42 minutes long. Uh, because if it had been two hours long, or three hours long, uh, I feel like I would have slowly but surely and successfully lost the will to live. Um, <laughs> if you're a fan of Flaming Creatures, uh, it is what it is. It's, it's opinions on movies, but uh, this wasn't a movie to me. This is such a nothing entry into uh, the, the history of cinema. Like, I, I don't see why this is included in, in any kind of uh, book list, uh, why it has any accolades. I looked on Letterboxd, there was five-star reviews, people saying that this is an incredible film. Uh, even people saying it helped them within themselves, and if it does, then I suppose that's worthwhile. For something, but for me personally, I got absolutely nothing out of it. Directed by a guy called Jack Smith, who, from what I understand, was more of a performance artist, and that was kind of his forte, generally considered to be, as the Wikipedia page states, the uh, one of the founding fathers of performance art. Also, this film has the lofty kind of uh, uh, accolade of, of basically inventing and or at least popularizing. Uh, kind of drag culture as it has become today. Um, so this film basically uh, is 42 minutes of some people that Jack Smith got together on a New York rooftop uh, over a couple of months in 1961 or two and they just dressed up or in various states of dress and undress and drag uh, men and women, um, you know, balls out, knobs out, tits out wiggling their willies all over the place, just jiggling boobs, there's like a, a gang rape scene that goes on for about 15 minutes and you know that, that term conjures up some pretty strong images but it's actually fairly tame, it's just uh, very strange and odd, the sound design is all over the place, the camera's all over the place, um, it's just a it's just a, a, it's an orgy of exhibitionists faffing around for 42 minutes and some abstract stuff mingled in. Uh, so I got the book, I want to read to you this, uh, or maybe s just some of it. Uh, the review for Flaming Creatures inside uh, the 1000 movies you must see before you die list. Uh, book. Flaming Creatures. Originally intended as a comedy, Jack Smith's stunning Flaming Creatures paradoxically became the greatest scandal of an increasingly notorious underground cinema scene. Throughout the 1960s and 70s, screens of the film were frequently interrupted by riotous crowds and irritated cops. The unfortunate and violent reaction to Smith's beautiful, innovative picture speaks volumes for the prudery of state-enforced norms regarding gender and sexual representation. Shot on outdated black and white film stock, Flaming Creatures is a gorgeous, flickering series of cloudy images featuring Smith's friends in various forms of exotic, low-budget drag. Eschewing narrative continuity, the film instead presents a number of sequences and disconnected tableau that recall the aesthetic indulgences of Joseph von Sternberg and the exotic fantasy world of Smith's muse, the 1940s queen of the Technicolor, Maria Montez. Beginning with a lengthy, teasing introduction to the creatures, the film moves on to a coy scene of flirtation and a hilarious and beautiful lipstick sequence in which a guy is putting lipstick on and there's a, a knob resting on his shoulder. When the butch yet demure Francis Francine chases and begins to ravish the enticing, delicious Dolores, all the creatures join in and fall into an at times aggressively delirious rapture. That's the gang rape scene. 
the great underground drag superstar Mario Montez makes his appearance as the Spanish girl, dancing and flapping her fan in the midst of the Busby Berkeley-esque finale. The film also boasts an eclectic soundtrack that includes Deanna Durbin, Bella Bartok, the Everly Brothers, and excerpts from various Sternberg and Montez films. The distinctive beauty of Flaming Creatures is due largely to Smith's nimble use of handheld camera. His unexpected framings yield dense images of fabrics, body parts, and heavily made up faces. The open links between these images and among the bodies, body parts, and genders flaunted on the screen make Flaming Creatures a boundless practical resource for living one's life fabulously. What a load of horseshit. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, uh, if you're into drag, you know, and um, you know people who who are in, have that lifestyle, this might be something you can get something from. But even then, I don't think there's much of interest here. Uh, that review is waxing lyrical over things that I just I just don't see. You know, I see bad film stock being used, and so I can't really t tell what's going on. It isn't a beautiful image of, to me. It isn't like, and the cameras all over the place. It's just like wobbling like that. Just da 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 da. Da, 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 da. That that isn't nimble, you know, expert use of handheld camera. That's someone just shaking a camera around and just filming random bits of genitalia. So uh, you know, to me, that this is probably the worst entry that I've I've seen so far. I mean, Heaven and Earth Magic, I at least saw a bit more in. Uh, you know, Land Without Bread had a lot more artistic merit, even if I hated the the integrity behind the film. Uh, you know, An Andalusian Dog and Chien Andalou um, wasn't a big fan, but that there's artistic merit there still. This has no artistic merit to me. Um, it's just a nothing piece of underground cinema that you know, for the people who enjoy that kind of stuff, cool. But a film you should see before you die, I, I really don't think so. Um, again, if you get something out of this film. All the power to you, um, you know. I certainly don't think that it's it's offensive. I mean, even all, all the stuff in it, like the obscenities of well, <laughs> obscene images for 1960s. But uh, you know, even that wasn't really that bothersome. It was just a bit weird, and I don't know why I'm looking at a tit being jiggled for you know 20 minutes. Uh, it, was, it was it was a tit for tit's sake, <laughs> and I love tits. Who doesn't? But it's just. Uh, it's just there, you know, and and that's what the film is. It's just there. So is it a film you should see before you die? No, not really. Um, definitely avoid it. You're not probably going to get anything out of it. You're not probably going to get anything out of it. That is in proper English. This film has addled my brain. Uh, I'll leave it there. Thank you for watching, uh, and I'll see you in the next one.